and then Jody was like, take some regular marinara. And I kid you not, the, I mean, the burrito, the wrap was good, but once I dipped it in that marinara sauce, it went from being like a seven to a 10. It was delicious. <laughs> That's why I think our products have just been better accepted. Earlier in my food service career, we would have never thought about doing that. So I'm always looking for, you know, creating easy, delicious, healthy meal solutions for people. Well, we produce the best, <laughs> fr freshest, best tasting tomatoes in the world. So tomato paste, just two tablespoons, counts as a vegetable serving. You know, you're not making nutritious trash cans. You want to make nutritious kids, right? All right. Welcome to the Next Up Podcast. We are at Red Gold HQ in Indiana, and I'm super excited to be sitting here with you three lovely people. And let's get some introductions. Um, Jody, do you want to go first? Absolutely. Nice to be here, Marlon. Thank you for coming all the way to Indiana. Thanks for hosting. Yeah. So my name is Jody Batten. I, uh, I'm the National Sales and Marketing Director for our non-commercial business, really been specifically focused on K-12 for the last almost 20 years. And uh, I've actually got a total of almost 40 years in food service uh, in the last 20 with Red Gold. And it's been really a fun ride. We've, uh, we've David and I together have really built a, a whole uh, branded business around uh, our Better Nutrition Made Simple products, really focused on the K-12 segment. And um, we just have fun uh, really working, you know, working with our customers and getting new products. And uh, it's been great. Yeah, it has been great. And you're somewhat of a legend in the game out there. Whenever <laughs> I mention your name, people get like super excited. Like, oh my gosh, Jody's amazing, incredibly smart, all this, all this experience. And um, this project that we've, that we've been working on together has been absolutely amazing. And you want to kind of touch on what we're doing up here in Indiana with you guys? Oh, yeah, this is really exciting. One of the things we re really wanted to sort of document is what we call kind of the seed to tray and really the evolution of um, tomato products in K-12 and, um, and with Red Gold. And, um, you know, it's it's there's just so much such a great story to tell. And we've got uh, one very important person in that in that uh, equation that is going to be retiring soon. Mm -hmm. So Wait, we, who's we, that? Oh, <laughs> that would be David. <laughs> <laughs> Retirement. You're far too young to retire. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, well, my name is David Hall, just for the record. But I am, uh, I am coming up on my 45th year in food service. So I started in the food service industry right out of college, and I've worked for a lot of large nationally branded companies. But the best, absolute best move. Um, was taking up the opportunity with Red Gold. Um, it's 27 years ago to actually start a food service business. So um, I am have been the leader of the food service division, and um, I'll be retiring here in the next six months. And uh, Red Gold has put together a step back plan so that I can turn the reins over to to people, the, the various segments and of of our food service business. So I'm. Um, Really just super happy to work for a privately held company that believes in the, the category. And uh, like I say, it's almost as if I was running my own business on somebody else's money. They, the owner of the company has invested heavily in the building of our food service business. So it's a great, great career opportunity when you get that to happen. So in all the years you've been uh, working with Red Gold, what, what's like the moment that you are most proud of? Oh, that's a good. Put you on the spot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you weren't ready for that one, were you? <laughs> you know, we are. Uh, we're in a single category. We're in the tomato category, and in food service, that usually doesn't get the limelight. But um, we have forged really strong relationships with our customers in food service, which is primarily corporate food service distributors, and to be recognized by the largest food service distributors in the country, like. Cisco and U.S. Foods as literally their supplier of the year um, was just really touching. And we, and we earned that honor with both of those dis large corporate distributors and, and quite frankly, uh, with a lot of our uh, other corporate distributors. So I think when both your peers and your customers recognize you, there's no, no prouder moment. So I, I look at those and I always want to share that with the, the people at Red Gold that have kind of manage that through. And then I love coming back to Indiana and sharing it with the family and all the employees, all the way down to the plant level. We have an internal newsletter that we just 
thank everybody for you know an award that Red Gold recently won. That's so, amazing. Congrats. Yeah. And speaking of the family, this is a family-owned business, fourth yeah. generation, if I'm correct? That's right. Um, fourth generation. Uh, I had uh, the privilege of coming over uh, and working for Brian Reichert. Um, he's the president and CEO 26 years ago, and it was really under his guidance that Red Gold just flourished as a, both a retail and a food service company. So I have worked directly for uh, Brian for 27 years. And, and um, like I said, to have somebody who has never said no to me wow. <laughs> in terms of adding a new line, adding a new plant, investing in peop more people, investing software, uh, it's just been a great experience. And to kind of add on to that, David, I, I remember when you and I uh, joined together after uh, – you know, I had left uh, my previous tomato company. <laughs> mm, let's not talk about that. <laughs> right? Uh, we, were, we were, I believe, co-packing ketchup packets, correct? Yes. And now we have over... 14, 14, 14 lines that we do uh, wow. portion control. Ketchup packets yeah. on. Wow. So it was line after line after line he approved, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Actually, earlier in my career, I worked for a, uh, a uh, large uh, tomato company as well. And um, so now, you know, when I had the opportunity to come to Red Gold is that I would always think about, ooh, what did they do? And it's like, what can I do differently? And uh, generally, that's that's been my guiding principle yeah, I, for, for the like last that. 27 <laughs> years. You know, if, if they don't find a segment important, let's let's really dig in and mm -hmm. see if it can be important, if it can be strategic. And, and quite frankly, that was the K-12 school business for us 20 years ago when yeah. most, you know, most canned, canned fruits, vegetables, tomato companies really didn't think that much about the school business. And, and we decided to really invest in it. This is surprising because K-12 food, it's consistent business. It is, but it, you know, back then, um, you know, most manufacturers would think about it as bid business, mm, right? Yeah. And it's just like the low bid one, the specifications were pretty general, mm -hmm. and you, know, you didn't want to necessarily um, give up your capacity. When you're an agricultural company and you only get to produce so many tomatoes in a given year, and that is you know, your universe of what you can offer to your customers, yeah. a lot of times you don't want to give it up to, in a bid situation. And so unless, uh, you know, when the specifications started becoming um, more um, demanding and more nutrition first, that's when we decided that let's develop products specifically for that. And then that way, even though it's still a bid, uh, you know, um, you can um, put more technology, more specifications, more... Uh, innovation into these products so that you're not necessarily have to be the low bidder to get the business. Yeah. So this out of curiosity, where did the name Red Gold come from? You know, that's a great story. Uh, Red Gold um, started in 1942, and uh, it um, was a family project. Um, back in that day, I was not there, even though I'm going to be retiring soon <laughs> after a long career. I was not, I was not around then. <laughs> But at that point in time, there were a lot of fruits, vegetables, and tomato, small canners around the Midwest. As a matter of fact, I've been told at one point there were over 100 tomato canners in the state of Indiana alone. Every little community had a cannery. And a lot of them um, faded away, you know, as, as small businesses tend to do. But in 1942, as part of a war effort, uh, the, the, one of the plants nearby here in Arrestus, Indiana, was uh, resurrected and uh, kind of put back into commission to supply uh, tomato products. And so the, the brand evolved, I think, out of a couple different names. Um, and then finally, um, for the first 50 years of our, our existence, uh, we were a retail canner. And uh, red gold made a lot of sense and had a big old tomato on our logo. So it was pretty evident to most people, you know, where, yeah. where the name and where the brand came from. And um, really, it wasn't until about the mid-90s that we expanded uh, outside and started making other tomato products and ketchup that really kind of launched uh, our business from just being a small Midwest canner 
to a larger player with both retail and food service. So I think it's it's um, uh, people have said that it's it's red. Obviously, you know, most of everything we do are one category company, so it, it's very inclusive, and we always have our tomato logo. On. Well, it's like you guys struck gold with this one category. Well, that's right? what a lot of Red people gold. have said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like it. I like it. Yes. All right, Michelle, you're up. You're, you are the resident tomato expert from the dietetic world. So let's, let's get your intro real quick. Yes. Thanks for having me. So excited to be here. My name is Michelle Dudash. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a Cordon Blue certified chef. And um, I'm a cookbook author. I love creating consumer recipes. My two books are Clean Eating for Busy Families and the Low Carb Mediterranean Cookbook. Okay. So I really, and of course, my most important job, I'm a mom. So I'm always <laughs> looking for, you know, creating easy, delicious, healthy meal solutions for people. I've, I have been in food service since the age of 14. That was my first job in food service. I've worked front of house, back of house. I mean, I've done all sorts of things, but it built and built and built and ultimately led me to what I'm doing today. Okay, great. Yeah. So in your uh, in a lot of your recipes, I'm assuming you use tomatoes. I love using <laughs> tomatoes. In fact, I'm so glad you asked that. You know, Let's funny, talk about tomatoes. I was actually looking through my cookbooks last night, and I was curious. So I looked under the index under tomatoes, mm -hmm. and my publisher they do the indexing, and it was it was awesome to see. Actually, they have I have just as many canned tomato recipes as I do fresh tomato recipes. Okay. Actually, I think I might even have had a couple more canned now that if I count it, but it takes, I love using canned yeah. tomatoes. They're just so, yeah, they're, I mean, I'll, we'll talk more about that, but yes, to answer your question. Well, let's talk about that. Cause I was, I was having a conversation with Jody whenever we first started talking about this whole campaign that we're working on. And she educated me and let me know that a, a uh, tomato paste is actually more, has more nutritional benefits than just a tomato off, the plant. Is that true? That is, in fact, true. How? Well, <laughs> the crown jewel in tomato paste is the lycopene. Okay, what is lycopene? So lycopene is a phytonutrient. It's a, so it's a natural plant compound that's found in uh, fruits and vegetables in plants. Okay. And so lycopene specifically is in red pigmented uh, fruits and vegetables. So tomato paste. So when, when lycopene, when tomatoes are cooked, that lycopene gets more concentrated. It increases. It's actually 20 times more bioavailable than the lycopene in fresh. So what does bioavailable mean? That basically means that our bodies absorb it better. Okay. And that's, at the end of the day, that's what matters, right? right? Yeah. How much, first of all, are we eating it? Do we enjoy it? Is it going into our body? And, and second, how much of it are we actually absorbing? Yeah. So, yeah, tomato paste is, I, oh. love, I love using tomato paste. Chefs love tomato paste. <laughs> Chefs love, I've cooked in fine dining, in, uh, you know, college dining. Uh, tomato paste adds umami, mm -hmm. that fifth taste. Yeah. It's savory. It's delicious. It's low, you know, lower in sodium than all these other things you can, people add to, so might add to recipes or products. And so, and it, it thickens sauces and it just really adds so many things. And of course the nutrition. Oh yeah. So one tablespoon of tomato paste, it actually takes 1.6 fresh tomatoes to make one tablespoon of tomato paste. So you might be asking, well, what, you know, what, how, how does that, you know, how does it happen? Well, basically tomato paste is you, you take your fresh tomatoes, you cook it down, you know, the skins and the seeds are removed. You cook it down some more and it's turns into a paste. So it's it's you know you're reducing you're removing water. Tomatoes are 94% water. I had no idea. I know That's it's crazy. A it's a high water content, which Very is great. High. Water's awesome, you know. We can drink <laughs> water. We can get it. water in all sorts of ways, right? Um, but what is the rest of that tomato? It's fiber, it's nutrients, it's vitamins, it's lycopene. And so you can see how that fresh tomato, all those great nutrients that's in a fresh tomato, vitamin A, vitamin C, fiber, potassium, lycopene, those just get more concentrated in tomato paste. Mm, I love it. I love yeah. it. So, Jody, can you talk about why the tomato paste is so important just for children in general and why you guys have moved into school food service with this innovative new solution? Well, <clears throat> first of all, the USDA requires that kids eat and Veg, fruits and vegetables every day. 
So uh, what's important is that the kids actually eat the vegetables. And so, you know, we're very fortunate to have a, a, a vegetable product, uh, tomato paste, um, diced tomatoes, you know, just the whole tomato category. But primarily we start with tomato paste. And then we can create a great tasting finished product, whether it's a marinara sauce or a salsa that is high in nutrients because, as um, Michelle mentioned, it's been very concentrated. So we can get a, a, a very affordable portion uh, size product for, for the kids to eat and accompany with their, um, with their meal. And it, and it counts as a vegetable. We kind of call it stealth nutrition because the kids don't even uh, realize that they're getting so much nutrition packed into, you know, a serving size that's actually, um, you know, something that they can eat. So we've really been looking at and, you know, helping uh, schools think of all kinds of different ways to include uh, these products into their, into their menus. Speaking as a food manufacturer, uh, actually, it's very difficult to bring raw tomatoes and, and actually produce products from that. But uh, tomato paste from a manufacturing standpoint is very easy to work with. Uh, you can control uh, quantities in every batch and um, you can also make sure that it's consistent. You know, there's measurables um, in terms of Bostwick, which is solids and color and, and all the things that you need to be consistently manufacture food. So that's why um, tomato paste, you know, whether you buy it in a small can at home and make it your favorite recipe, or you buy it in industrial sizes like we do uh, from industrial tomato processors and then use it in making our recipes and our formulas in a much larger scale uh, so that we can package it in food service sizes. And um, we take that tomato paste and, and it really is the basis for so many of our food service products. So simple things like, as Jody mentioned, spaghetti sauce, marinara sauce, pizza sauce, salsa, condiments like ketchup. And oh, by the way, Kids love those things yeah. as no most ladies. adults, right? It's not just kids. So. Yeah, as do most adults. Yeah. And so when you're making these products uh, primarily out of uh, tomato paste, it gives you the opportunity to make those products year-round as well. Red Gold is fortunate. We have three plants here in the state of Indiana. All three plants operate year-round, and, um, and it keeps full-time employees. And we have the ability of, yes, we, yes, we harvest tomatoes during – the harvest period, which is usually August through October, but all of our plants operate year-round. All Red Gold manufacturing employees are dual trained. They have a job during the fresh pack, and they have another job during what we call um, the pace pack uh, year-round. So it's a great product for us as a, as a manufacturer to be able to create products that kids love and, and, and adults love, and it's got wide usage. So it's a very high volume item that... Uh, Food service distributors um, need to buy that product from processors and man manufacturers like a Red Gold. And then the food service distributors are the ones who are delivering the groceries then to food service operators. So commercial restaurants or non-commercial such as healthcare or schools. But um, so in our world at, food at Red Gold Food Service, we sell to these corporate distributors who turn around and sell them to the, to the schools. Well, talking about the wide usage and the stealth nutrition, um, we were filming yesterday at a school. We were in uh, Perry Township at the middle school, and we were all starving. Because I mean, filming is a lot of work, right? So we were dying. And uh, Jamie on her team, she made a recommendation that we should order these, what was it? Like it was an egg white, like burrito, Beta, something, something like that. Yeah. So we got them. And then Jody was like, take some red gold marinara. And I kid you not. The, I mean, the burrito, the wrap was good, but once I dipped it in that marinara sauce, it went from being like a 7 to a 10. It was <laughs> delicious. <Yum. laughs> so I bet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Michelle, why why are why are tomatoes so important to children? Like, what are some of the, the nutritional benefits that children um, receive from eating tomato paste? Yes. Well, tomato paste. And why it's important. First of all, yeah, so tomato paste, just two tablespoons counts as a vegetable serving, mm -hmm. right? Okay, in, as part of the lunch program, which is amazing because if I know my kids and if I gave them, you know, I told them to eat half a cup of fresh tomatoes, I, I, I don't <laughs> want to really report what they would not do. And they, I, they, yeah. they're much more likely mm -hmm. to dip. They love marinara sauce. They yeah. love 
They love uh, spaghetti sauce. They love taco meat that has, you know, the tomato paste in it. So that is the first step, getting kids to eat the food, right? Um, but what, what's so important in the tomato is, and in the tomato paste, is a lot of different nutrients. So the vitamin C. Vitamin C is important for bone health, for example, our immune function, and especially, my goodness, we're all wanting a healthier immune system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and also vitamin A in the form of beta carotene, from, because it's from uh, plants, and which is important for a variety of things, again, like eye health. And kids grow, you know, keep in mind, kids are growing, right? So we're, what are we building? We're building bone structure, which is super important. Um, another thing that it's in, uh, in it is potassium. Potassium is an electrolyte. So, and it actually works, works interestingly compared with in conjunction with sodium. We hear all the time like, oh, Americans, we eat too much sodium. Well, guess what? Potassium actually helps counterbalance the effects of sodium. Do we need sodium? Yes, we need some, uh, but just has, you know, you find high sodium foods along the way and um, potassium just helps balance things out. So potassium is super important. Also for heart health, for blood pressure. And, and it, it might be kind of alarming. You think, oh, kids and high blood pressure. It's, it's already starting to be an issue yeah, it's for worse some and worse children. Year, right? Exactly. Uh, blood pressure. And then preventing that disease down the road, right? So tomato paste, because of the lycopene, when we're talking about heart health. So it's not just, we don't just wake up when we're 40 and get the diagnosis that we have high cholesterol. It's not just from what we ate yesterday. It's from a lifetime of how we ate. And of course, there's genetics, our lifestyle, exercise. But food is a huge part of that. So getting those important nutrients helps, like the lycopene, like the fiber, those help reduce our risk for diseases, chronic diseases that are becoming epidemics in this country down the road. So it's helping two prong with growth and healthy structures, but also for a lifetime and prevention. So it sounds like Red Gold is building stronger, smarter, healthier children with their products. Well, I, I, Jody, I think you can elaborate on this. Really what we've talked about is products that are nutritious and that kids love to eat so that you don't have to, you know, you're not making nutritious trash cans. You want to make nutritious kids, exactly. right? So this is where Red Gold, about 20 years ago, really jumped in. And the items that use, you know, these things that we've been talking about, tomato-based products, you know, everyone loves them, spaghetti sauce, marinara sauce, pizza sauce, salsa, condiments like ketchup. The finished product tended to have a little bit too much sodium. So one of the big things that we did was recognize that, and then we went and reformulated and created up a whole new lineup of product. Jody, you want to talk a little yeah. bit more about that? Yeah, sure. That we, we actually have a, a kind of a brand umbrella that they fall under. It's called our Better Nutrition Made Simple Products. And it all started really back before the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act even. We started looking at how could we make our, one of our first products was spaghetti sauce. How could we make that spaghetti sauce more nutritious? We can add more tomato paste. At the time, um, there was a meal pattern that schools could potentially follow that was called nutrient-based, and vitamin A was an important part of that um, measurement scale. So we actually enhanced um, that product with 100% of vitamin A, C, and E. But as time and as the meal pattern changed, you know that product evolved. And so uh, that product with, with the Healthy Hunger Free Kids uh, uh, Healthy Hunger for Kids Act came out, you know, looking at focusing on reducing sodium. Um, you know, we, we, we just kind of went, we leaned into it early on, um, and we just started looking at how could we take sodium out of our product. You guys are one of the first companies to actually lean in and, like, tackle the problem before it became an actual problem, right? Yes, so we, we did. And we didn't, you know, and again, it depends on your product. We were kind of lucky. But, you know, if you're if you're a hamburger or a chicken patty, I mean, you got to drop sodium slowly, right? But we realized in the analyzing this, we could take as much as 70% of the sodium out of our spaghetti sauce, out of our ketchup, without and, and with through our proprietary formulation of kind of balancing sugars, herbs, seasoning, flavor, you know, still deliver a great tasting, delicious product. 
So we did that, you know, probably close to, you know, 14, 15 years ago. And we just went from there, went to our marinara sauce, our pizza sauce. So we have an entire line, 22 products under this Better Nutrition Made Simple that have all these wonderful attributes. Um, you know, the kids are me eating thanks to our customers across the United States, our school food service directors and dietitians, um, so many of the students are eating some of the healthiest tomato products that are available. Um, we, we don't even necessarily have products that are this healthy available on the retail side. No, it's true. <laughs> so what was a stat that you told me yesterday? Because you were mentioning how you guys took out 70% of the sodium and there is some like rating system for student, student health. Do you, uh, do you remember? Uh, and or like some index and oh yeah yeah we're talking about yes yeah, so we're talking about the proposed rule yes you want to just kind of yeah a little, little, little bit give me a little something oh, okay a little <laughs> something on the proposed rule well um you, you know we're all uh, waiting for you know what USDA is going to come out with in terms of the the next step in sto in sodium uh, and you know it was interesting because in their own proposed rule they measured how healthy the meals are. And they use a, a, a benchmarking system, like it's called the Healthy Eating Index, H-E-I. And they even said that over the last 10 years that it's improved by 25 points. So, you know, I, you know, of course, I kind of weighed in with a comment, of course, and just, you know, tried to remind um, USDA that, you know, we were one of the manufacturers, like many manufacturers, that didn't wait for the sodium rules to take effect. You know, we started reducing sodium over 10 years ago by 70%. So think of all the other manufacturers that are out there that have also done that. Uh, I mean, I, I believe that's the only way that 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 healthy eating index could have gained 25 points is because we've all been making changes, slow, gradual changes. Yeah. So as manufacturers, like how do you guys keep up with all the changes and keep providing these consistent solutions for schools? Because there's a lot of regulation changes that happen with schools. Yes, that's, oh, I love reading regulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sure don't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we do try to, you know, stay on the, on kind of on the, uh, the cutting edge and just keep up with what's going on. And then, you know, even with the latest proposed rule, I mean, we've had a group meeting talking about, you know, how much further can we go with sodium, if at all? How much further can we go reducing sugar? You know, and looking at and talking about what does that look like, phased in, slow. Um, but, you know, you know, not putting our head in the sand. Yeah. Definitely talking about and thinking about it, you know, maybe a slow ramp up on reductions. Mm. So, Michelle, I have to ask you, as a chef, what are your thoughts on reducing sodium in meals? Well, it's. I think it's needed. It's a a great movement in the right direction. Um, it's possible, but yeah, like Jody said, it, it takes time. You know, it's our taste buds need uh, it oftentimes need some time to uh, adjust. Um, so yeah, like uh, I've heard the stat, ten percent is like a, and when I do rest when I create recipes. If I'm trying to lower the sodium, I start with ten percent. So that's kind of like the you know the threshold where. It's not as detectable. So because, again, it always comes back to will they still eat it? Right. You know, yeah, right. so you really it's just that fine line. And it's this it's this dance of. But you also look at things you can add to add flavor. Right. And so like for tomato paste, for example, that is a great that's a great add in because it adds that umami. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, things like acidic, uh, other acidic things like, um, for example, well, in my recipe, sometimes I'm using lemon juice or citrus or things like that. Or vinegar, for example. So those are all, there's all these little chef tricks that help reduce, uh, help you reduce sodium in recipes while still keeping that taste. It's all about the balance, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. all about the balance. You got your salt, your acid, your fat. <laughs> your <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the fat. Heat, Give me some more fat. All those things. <laughs> So it's really about, yeah, what is the final product and how does the sodium come? But when I've, of course, as a recipe developer, mm -hmm. I am always, first, I, I, first I'm thinking about flavor and I'm thinking about um, what it looks like, the color, color is so important. Mm -hmm. And, but then, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like waking up on Christmas morning. I'm like, okay, I'm going to analyze this recipe. <laughs> Let's see where the sodium comes out. Because if somebody, if, 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 if a recipe shows that it's really high in sodium, some people will lose their minds. So we have to make sure that the sodium, but fortunately I've learned over creating recipes for so long, I've learned how much 
sodium, how much salt I can add to a recipe, for example. We're talking about, yeah, you know, for a family of four or six or whatever, or in my, like in a seasoning mix. And I've kind of learned now over time, like, oh, I know I can use this, but ooh, if I use that ingredient, ooh, that's gonna kill this. So it's it's just this balance. It's about at the end of the day, how does this how does the sodium come out? But yes, people are eating too much sodium. Um some people are sensitive to sodium and it increases their blood pressure. Blood pressure, having a high blood pressure increases your risk for certain diseases like stroke. So they, those are some hard facts. So reducing sodium is definitely helping um, a step in the right direction. I will also say that, uh, you know, certain types of foods are the biggest contributors to the sodium in American diets. Like, like what? For example, uh, fast food, mm -hmm. super high in sodium. It's, it's just so high in a, lot of, uh, in a lot of different, so, so keeping an eye on that, there's little things you can do. Just looking at, it, looking at uh, nutrition facts, for example, but that's one thing. Restaurant foods can be high. So again, it just it there are certain foods like deli foods, right? Deli meats. So there's certain foods that are super high, but some foods you just really need, like bread, for example, to make bread taste good. You really <laughs> do need some salt. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, bread is a big contributor. Um, so you, there, it's really just taking a look, and everyone has a different eating style, you know, a different eating plan. So it's about at the end of the day balance, you yeah. know. Yeah. And we've we've actually been, you know, kind of playing on that. We've been fortunate to be able to balance uh, some of our key products, mm -hmm. like ketchup and barbecue sauce, right? Mm -hmm. You've got sodium and you've got sugar, and then you've got tomatoes in there, right? So it's a, it's a very delicate balance of sure. removing sodium. So it's gonna make that product probably a little bit sweeter, but particularly for kids, like with our ketchup and our barbecue sauce, a little sweeter note isn't necessarily a bad thing, while we were able to remove 70 to 80% of the sodium at the same time. So you, you mentioned earlier that the uh, some of the, the products in schools are actually healthier than the ones in retail light. Why and how is that? <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> well, um, you know, again, we're, we've got an audience that's demanding that, you know, and it starts with the USDA standards, right? And, um, and when you look at retail, you know, people may talk out of one side of their mouth and want to eat healthier, but, you know, what, do their purchase decisions actually influence that? And from what we're hearing and seeing, you know, there's a little bit of demand for that. Um, but, you know, David, I don't know, you might, you know, want to weigh in on that. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people are surprised about the hidden, you know, the hidden sugar, the hidden mm. salt and things. And particularly in the school segment, you know, you have dietitians that are looking out for the menu and the kids that eat off of that menu. And, you know, we hear a lot of times, well, gee, I'm going to send lunch in with my kids. But if you just observe what comes in, oh. it's like a very small percentage are serving, you know, really healthy uh, lunches from home. And a lot of it is like what uh, oh, Michelle I've talked seen about I've seen a lot them. of the other <laughs> things are what Michelle talked about it's like oh my goodness right is the deli meats and it's the highly processed foods that have a yes. lot of sodium in them lack of fruits and vegetables no fruits and vegetables in, in, right. in lunches from home 100 percent yeah that is that is Absolutely. so true lack so, of yeah so anyway. when, when when from what I hear when, when our retail um, counterparts have tried to introduce some of these healthier, items, whether it's in our red gold brand or in a private label brand, they're just not as popular. They're not purchased. Uh, I don't know if I believe that. I mean, I had some, <laughs> some really tasty product yesterday, and I would much rather buy that in the store than what yes. some of the other mm. solutions that are out there. It was delicious. You know, actually, uh, our retail folks who who do buy syndicated purchase data, uh, they, they will see the statistics change. And Many of the tomato items sold in retail now are, are at least need to be offered as no salt added and let the consumer kind of season to taste. Mm -hmm. And so th there is you know, a little slight movement uh, towards offering an alternate to, you know, whether it's a regular diced tomato or a no salt added diced tomato. We see that a lot in food service, uh, particularly in non-commercial, where this, uh, people want to buy no salt added um, tomatoes, um, in, in a lot mm -hmm. of segments in food service. Yeah, I think it depends a lot on the audience too. I'm I'm very in front of consumers all the time between, you know, c 
cookbooks and TV segments, and I have a seasoning mix line. I am always, I'm at the farmer's market. I am <laughs> all over the place talking to consumers. And you get different questions. And there are certain people looking at sodium, and there are certain people that do, that's not even on their radar yet. I think for some people, they're, when they're, they're thinking about their blood pressure and they've been told by their doctor it's time to reduce the sodium, there that's the you know there's a wake up call there but there are definitely yeah people that they 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 don't know what that means yet low sodium what does that mean <laughs> what, how is that going to affect my taste the taste in this dish right yeah and tomato products are let's face it they're an ingredient in a lot of recipes and you can never take the sodium out if you're buying you know a tomato yep. product you can always add mm -hmm. so you can always add salt but you can also yes. add spices in lieu of salt yes and so. That's why I think our products have just been better accepted. Earlier in my food service career, we would have never thought about doing that because it was all about taste, right? Yeah. If you didn't taste better than the competitor, you just never had the opportunity. Now you, it's a combination, mm -hmm. right, of what all, the, what all the attributes that you can touch. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting in food service, what we found, particularly in the schools, is it's also a matter of packaging format. And we saw that really come to play, you know, recover, you know, with COVID and the, and more importantly, the COVID recovery, where you know, schools needed to buy in a different format, and that caused Red Gold to actually create up a whole new lineup of packaging. You know, instead of selling it in bulk and having the cafeteria staff portion out, you know, whether it was a marinara sauce or a salsa, um, the schools needed pre-portioned. And so that actually caused us as a company. And again, um, well, fortunately, we were positioned before COVID. Yes. And we, we had production. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, so having things available in dipping cups and dunk cups uh, really were important in the COVID recovery period. Um, and I think uh, over the last couple of years, though, we've actually seen where um, schools are going back to portioning. Uh, portioning yes, themselves. bulk and scratch movement towards scratch cooking, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Big movement towards scratch cooking, which again, tomatoes mm -hmm. uh, play a, a huge role in that. Tomatoes as ingredient products in scratch cooking. Uh, so what are some of the most uh, innovative meals you've seen in schools using your products? Do you have any favorites out there? Oh, gosh, you know. You're like, there's so many of them. How, how can I pick yesterday, one? Yesterday, <laughs> right? We, had, we saw, of course, I mean, here's the thing. When you look at and evaluate school meals over the last 50, 60 years, it really boils down, you ask any school food service director, kids like pizza, chicken, something Mexican, um, Italian. You know, it's it just really hasn't changed that much. I think what's morphed and what's been great is um, schools adapting to grab-and-go. Right, and taking those so, kind of same favorite menu ideas and putting them into grab and go format. So we had a big movement, um, you know, probably uh, seven, eight years ago, and just trying to help schools create grab and go meal kits. And we got together with ten other companies, you know, products, and we pictured their products in our brochures just to help schools be able to create a reimbursable meal. So when that started, I mean, we've we've seen all. I mean, thanks to, you know, some great. Um, uh, Facebook groups like Tips for Meals at School, Tips for School Meals at Rock. You know, we get to see these beautiful pictures of of uh, schools across the country creating the most appealing um, dishes. You know, whether it's with our uh, salsa cup or the salsa scooped out of a number ten can, and just really attractive meals for for kids to eat. And same thing with marinara sauce and things like that. Um, uh, yesterday, I, I, you know, we we watched kids eat calzones. Or with marinara or, you know, the making their own nachos with our salsa. And, you know, all of the kids were enjoying their, their food. Yeah, they were truly, me included, we were all <laughs> enjoying the food. <laughs> so we're here to talk about seed to tray also. Like, that's why we're here. So can you ex just briefly explain what that process looks like? Like, starting with the seed, getting planted all the way to a tray. I'll take a stab at that yeah, <laughs> since I, I've I been around the, the longest. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, you know, Red Gold is... Um, we're an agricultural company and we're vertically integrated. So what that means for us is we've actually been breeding our own tomato seeds for well over 25 years. Uh, every year um, we plant of our, um, eight or nine different varieties of tomatoes. And so we, we do the process all the way from breeding the seeds, 
to growing the seeds into in greenhouses into seedlings and then our agriculture department works with our farmers growers transplanting the seedlings into the fields and then we oversee the, the, the nurturing of those plants right so so much water so many nutrients while they're growing they're harvested uh, and brought to one of our three company uh, three facilities they are washed and peeled and washed again and then processed put into a can they're cooked they're cooled and then they're put away for storage for because you only harvest tomatoes three months out of the year but you consume and sell them 12 to 15 months a year so then we store the product and then we label up the cans and put them into cases and put them in our distribution center and we uh, we operate our own distribution center and then we also have our own trucking company so if a customer wanted us to deliver the finished cases we could so you think about the epitome of vertical integration we breed the tomato seeds and we can deliver the finished cases on our own red gold trucks wow. that is awesome <laughs> that's pretty amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that is really amazing um gosh so how do you how how did you manage to do all that that's just well when you when you spend over 80 years in one category growing and processing tomatoes you get pretty good at it and there has been a just a, a terrific commitment on the behalf of the company to stay focused on tomatoes, to have a very um, aggressive agriculture department that works very closely with the growers. At one point, actually, the family, the Riker family, uh, were, were also the tomato farmers. Um, you know, current Brian, uh, our pre current president and CEO, his brother and his father at one point grew more than half of the tomatoes <laughs> for us as well. Um, they've both retired now, and so we have um, growers that are part of the Red Gold Master uh, Growing Program. Uh, there's about 35 farmers here in Indiana, southern Michigan, and western Ohio that are part of the Red Gold uh, Master Grower Program. And so um, you work very closely, and you, de and you develop really great relationships and trust uh, with your farmers because we're relying on them to really kind of nurture those tomato uh, tomatoes and plants and the tomatoes all the way uh, to the delivery and then we'll take it from there <laughs> once they're delivered to our plants we take over from there but we're very fortunate to have multi-generational farmers yes. where they are very committed to this being a part of their family legacy and moving forward and that's very important to us to partner with again probably more than 30 um, farmer families yeah. that are super committed to quality and um, you know we used to have when I started we used to talk about having 50 farmer families mm -hmm. but they've become so productive and their yields are so good we actually you know over time as farmers have gotten out of farming you know we've been actually able to right produce as much if not more with fewer farmer families wow that's, that's impressive what would you say is the one thing that separates you guys from your competition well, we produce the best, <laughs> fr freshest, best tasting tomatoes in the world. Yeah. All right, there you go. Uh, Mic drop. <laughs> Mic drop. You know, I think it's also the realization that um, whether it's a retail customer or it's a food service customer, whether it's a retail consumer or a food service patron, is not everybody will buy the same thing, right? And so we have to have the ability to produce good, better, best. And so whenever we're producing a product, um, we always have to keep that in mind. And we have very stringent Q, uh, quality assurance checks and balances. And we also do internal grading of our own products. So USDA has standards, you know, like USDA specifications for diced tomatoes or whole tomatoes. And they, they usually have, you know, grade A or B, sometimes C. Well, at Red Gold, we actually do what's called grading within a grade. So grade A, we actually have, you know, two different grades. And so when we produce product, we actually grade every pallet of product and, and uh, assign that to the barcode and to the record for that particular can, case, and pallet. And so then when a customer buys from Red Gold, um, for example, we have many customers that have three different labels diced tomatoes good better best you know and uh, you have to be able to um, have this that kind of ability to do good better best product because uh, people 
uh, they want to buy to their specifications, but also to the you know the financially what they're what they want to pay, right? And so that's a big difference I, I've seen over my years in food service at Red Gold is you can't you know you, you just can't say well they only do this product or they only do that product. No, we we actually do good, better, best on all, just about every product we produce. You guys really are the best, aren't you? Huh? We are. <laughs> we try. <laughs> you are. So, Jody, if there were schools out there that wanted to f- look up some resources on tomatoes, do you guys provide anything like that? And where would they go to find it? Well, thank you, Marlon, for asking. Well, you're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> yes, that's part of my job is trying to ensure the schools have all the resources, whether it's the nutritional facts or the recipes. Um, and it's all located at k12tomatoes.com. That takes us right now to the links right to our Red Gold Food Service, uh, the K-12 page that's just chock full of resources, including commodity processing calculators, which we participate um, in that program as well um, to help the schools, again, utilize their resources. But K-12tomatoes.com. All right. So for those people out there that may not know what commodity processing is, do you want to kind of just take a stab at that and explain it to them? Oh, sure. Um, It's a wonderful program that USDA um, implemented probably 50 or 60 years ago um, to really ensure that the farmers were being um, supported. And so all of the there's a a certain amount of uh, reimbursement that the schools get, you know, usually somewhere around 30 cents a meal that they get to put towards 100 percent. American-grown agricultural products, um, and those can come in a variety of ways, and the schools have options on how they spend that money. But um, we participate in that program. We are 100% American-grown, raised, you know, uh, fourth-generation American company. So we're so proud of that. And you know, as, as being that way, we can participate in the commodity program and offer 100% American tomato products. Um, and we, the, the schools get over 50 different choices mm-hmm. where they can actually use that money to um, reduce the cost of um, the products that they might need in the program. Okay, okay. So in closing, Michelle, give me one reason why students should eat more tomatoes from your perspective. Why students should eat more tomatoes? Yeah, because too. they delish, they're delicious. <laughs> I, can't, I don't have just one. They're delicious. Fine, they will eat one. them, and they're packed with nutrients. <laughs> We should feel good about giving our kids tomatoes, canned tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, all the tomatoes. They're really good for you. So when, you know, canned tomatoes are are available year round. (laughs) You know, I think that is, yeah. They're versatile too. It's they're Yeah, they're versatile. They're no food waste. (laughs) They don't require refrigeration. I mean, there's so many. You should see my pantry. That was a long answer. That was more than one word. (laughs) But you can tell that I'm a big fan. I'm as a mom, as a chef, as a dietitian. Yeah. It's a staple. It is. For the whole fam. Cool. All right. Well, David, why are you a big fan of tomatoes in closing? Give me something. Well, they've made a very good career for me here at Red Gold. (laughs) Um, And it's something that um, you don't have to explain to people, right? It's like... um, I've had a, a great career here at Red Gold, and I've worn a lot of hats. Um, but I still tell people who ask me, you know, what do you do? And I go, I'm a tomato salesperson. I'm a tomato <laughs> tomato sales guy. <laughs> and, and and they get a chuckle out of that. But it, it's, it's really true in terms of everybody loves tomatoes, everybody needs tomatoes, and what's the best way to buy them? And how can we get them to you in a really – efficient supply chain. And, and that's what we really focus in at Red Gold Food Services. Um, we have a very efficient supply chain and we make it easy for our customers to buy from us and we uh, take care of them. And that's why they recognize us for our service levels, you know, whether it's, you know, regular times, the good times that we're having right now, uh, or in tough times, you know, whether it's in COVID or when there's a, a short, a short year, you know, in out in other parts of the growing um, other growing areas in this country where tomatoes are grown. If, if there's a short harvest, you know, we all have to pick up the slack for one another. So I think that's what's really most gratifying is, is that, you know, we're selling something that people really want to buy. Yeah. So. All right. So, Jody, I have kind of a two-part question for you. Uh-oh. So <laughs> why? Why red gold and why tomatoes? So you you have been... You've done a lot, right? But you stuck with red gold, and there must be some reason why you stuck with the red gold. Is it just because of the tomatoes? Is it something else? Like, what is your why for for this? Well, it's it's the commitment from, like David said, from his from the owners, 
uh, to David, to R and D, to everybody has been committed to really, you know, helping us develop the product line and continue to add to it. And our customer service team, our logistics, really, we, we it's like one big family here. And I worked for some of the bigger companies that are out there, some of the I major know. corporations. And uh, it's just wonderful to be involved where everybody sort of feels like this is a piece, you know, this is their business, mm -hmm. you know, and, and everybody wants to, you know, ensure that our customers get the best customer service. Our, you know, we develop the most nutritious, delicious products. Um, I have every intention of retiring and finishing my career here at Red Cold as well. In 20 years? Because you're what, like, like 25, <laughs> 30 maybe? <laughs> thank you, Marlon. Right. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. And Jody, thank you for taking the tour. David, thank you for hosting. And I can't wait our for you pleasure. to enjoy your retirement. Michelle, I need to get a copy of your cookbook. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, can, I, I, can, I think I can uh, make arrangements for that. All right, cool. And one last time, where can people get more information about Red Gold? Well, we have redgoldfoodservice.com or for the K-12 part, k12tomatoes.com. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.